hello everyone and if you cannot hear me uh, please uh, give me a uh, send me a, a whatsapp okay so my whatsapp is on and uh, <clears throat> i am there milap please follow the instructions the nine digit key for all those who have not been able to uh, see is in their email key is on the email for everyone so good to have all of you online can everyone hear me loud and clear okay nirupam i got to go ahead can everybody else please give me the go ahead if they are having difficulty with audio and video super i really like this uh, this interaction interactive play between uh, technology and uh, as so we are almost uh, 35 on the uh class now uh some people have called in to say that they are not uh, be they are busy or uh, engaged elsewhere so they will be watching the recordings so i would like to assure all of you all that the recording will be available as and when you want to see it the recording will be made available to you one year from the end of this course so that's that so i am getting hiren also saying that uh, sign completion mobile can hear you clearly okay hiren thanks for that Rajat, you are having issues. Are you online? Okay, now I am going to switch to the uh, the toggle mode in which I am going to share the screen space uh, with you. Please confirm to me that you guys can see the uh, slide share presentation also. Uh, i repeat can all of you all please let me know if you can see the slide share presentation so i need a confirmation that all of you all can see the slide share presentation as well as my video Minu, I'm waiting for your feedback and also Ashish. So, can you see both the slide and the video, or only the slide? That's one last confirmation. What I want. Okay. So, at the at one point in time, are you seeing the slide as well as the video? or only the slide or only the video okay so great we are in uh, uh, super things and uh, super and i am now going to move to the uh, slide share uh, format because i think it will be easier for me i am more comfortable talking that as i get more versed with technology uh, i think that uh, things will move okay ashish uh, you have a a problem with that i think but everyone else is uh, pretty okay uh, okay fine so we are doing well i am moving now to the or uh, toggle mode
ओके सो वेलकम टू द मास्टर कोर्स इन पिकिंग मल्टी बैगर स्टॉक आइडियाज and uh, i really would like to this is my customary way of thanking you for joining in rather than saying thank you towards the end i believe i should should thank you all for taking the time entrusting me uh, with your uh, hard earned money and entrusting me with the fact that i can impart some knowledge and make a difference to your lives okay so let's get to the brass tacks of this course i'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about how the course is structured because i have tried to make it as immersive and as uh, uh as uh, uh learning value to you guys as possible in the shortest amount of time i do not expect you to do great levels of homework and uh, i would like there to be a lot of interaction whenever we uh, do these webinars and you learn very well from these so i will only say that if you follow all the exercises that are sent to you without missing any one of them i can assure you that you will become among the top percentile stock pickers of all time this is the amount of confidence that i have in the uh, knowledge that i am going to share with you guys so let's look at the best learning practices uh, that we will follow your class is structured in such a way as to facilitate maximum learning without having to too much uh, spend too much time studying on your own right so that is what i uh, told you about just a little earlier uh, second thing is regularly undertake the exercise provided to you a uh, daily time taken will not be more than 20 minutes and be sure that i will follow up individually with all of you on whatsapp so i am going to be breathing down your necks to see to it that you do all your exercises so i will connect with you at least two to three times a day on that then secondly please participate in the whatsapp groups freely so that all of us can gain collectively you may have certain doubts which might have not re uh, 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 reasoned out with someone else and he might all he or she may feel that they have the same doubt so the best thing is to share in this group as freely as possible and uh, maybe i might not reply to you immediately but during the day between 8 and 9 pm i will answer all queries uh, without uh, compromising on the time so the time 8 to 9 is purely dedicated to the multi baggers uh, uh, group again note that all master classes will be held at fixed times saturday 11:30 to 2 pm thursday 7:30 to 10 pm my apologies yesterday i was in really bad shape so i had to uh, this uh, just postpone this by one day then what we are going to do is we are going to divide each master class into eight capsules of 22 minutes followed by a breather of 8 minutes in which we will address queries so what will happen is that uh, the each section the 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 day session will be divided into five sections of 22 plus 8 so we will have one way communication for 22 minutes and eight minutes of uh, a breather after that so that you can also uh, just uh, log off mentally log off and log on and and the people who have any queries i can answer them so in case the query requires a slightly longer resolution then we will prolong the class by that much time okay so there will be totally a minimum of 30 classes during the master course two per week and even after 15 weeks if i feel that you know there's something that needs more to be covered we might take more classes now after the first master class that is on a saturday class every sunday monday and tuesday you will be provided with home assignments these will be mailed out to you or they will be kept in a special folder which i will share with you on google drive so you can go there and pick it up that is one thing which i will uh, provide and uh, on wednesday you will receive the study material along with exercises and workbook for thursday's class once the thursday's class is over on friday you will receive the same for saturday's class and every evening on the whatsapp there will be a small surprise that will enhance your learning so i intend to get a few good people in the market who are well renowned investors with uh, considerable fan following some 
uh, industry analysts, uh, traders, uh, fund managers, and uh, thinkers who believe in the longer term art of multi-bagger stock picking for discussion with our groups. So be sure that learning is round the clock, not only constrained to the 30 minute, uh, two and a half hours class, or for that matter to the assignments that you do, but every evening we'll have a great learning experience uh, taking us forward. Now, prior to every masterclass, we encourage you to take a small multiple choice questions test to assess how well you have become familiar with the content that we discussed prior to the masterclass. It will include all the elements of the previous masterclasses so that repetition will ensure permanent learning and picking multi bagels will become second learning. Let me come back to that. It will include all the elements of the previous masterclass so that repetition will ensure permanent learning and picking multi baggers will become secondary in nature, just like driving is. So you remember when you started driving, uh, there was total disconnect between the clutch, the gear, the handbrake, the steering wheel, uh, forward looking, uh, watching the rear view mirror, watching the side mirror, checking your speed, and generally uh, coordinating your uh, movements. But what happens over a period of time as you practice and you get uh, uh, the art of driving becomes uh, uh, familiar to you, it then becomes secondary, you know, so everything moves in unison. This is the same way in which uh, picking multi baggers will work. And uh, it will require that we do a lot of repetition. So what is taught in class one will be extended to class two. Whatever is uh, when we reach the fifth class, whatever we have learned in class one, two, three, four and five will be picked up and put together. So every day, bit by bit, drip by drip, the uh, fountains of knowledge will make a home in your brains and you will start looking at the markets in an entirely different way. Remember one thing, it is different to a buyer stock idea because uh, some change happened and you uh, you invested in that from that point of view or took a trade. But multi-bagger investing requires a totally different mindset. Before we get on with uh, this uh, process, I would like you to, uh, uh, I just now on the WhatsApp group, I have sent you a link to a Google Doc. And I would really appreciate if you would take five minutes time to, uh, to just open that Google Doc and fill it up. So essentially there are only three questions in that. Uh, it asks for your name, email, WhatsApp number. And when you, and uh, Uh, fill it up, it will send you to the next page and it will ask you to mention 10 stocks which you think are potential multi baggers as of today. Please don't get overwhelmed by this exercise. Uh, just go ahead and fill it up. Uh, I'll give you five minutes for this. And uh, the answers will come to me because it's a Google Doc. And you can change this at a later date also. But uh, what, how this will work is that you will be using these 10 stocks as your portfolio of shortlisted stocks from which you are likely to become uh, two to three multi bag ideas that you would like to invest in. So this is your baby, which you will be developing, applying the principles of uh, that you learned in this class. So I'm, I'm giving you a small five minute break. So please take it up. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, Rohit, I'm sending you that link on your uh, this thing. There's another group, but I'm sending it to you here.
there you go rohit so please take a uh, 5 minutes to fill it up and once you are done please give me the go ahead so i can go ahead with the uh, webinar Thanks, Suman. Thanks for your feedback that everything is running uh, smooth and good. So, if you, if anyone is having any kind of issue, I think uh, by next time it will all get sorted out. Devgar, it's okay. If you are not getting it, I will send it to you separately. Hello Rajat, you are in join on listen only mode. Good to have you back. Okay, people, questions seven, eight, nine, ten. Let it be. Do it up to question six. We can, uh, I will send you another link which will uh, have the 10. Arun, any issues going uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? Okay, just fill up till six and uh, in case you are not done, if that is not working, just uh, WhatsApp me your top 10 picks. Use the WhatsApp to send your top 10 picks. Take another five minutes on this, it's okay. Don't worry guys, first class, little bit of teething issues, but we'll get sorted. Next class will be better than this too. Yes, Harsh, put your top 10 stocks which you think will be multi bankers. Murli, smart person, yeah, enter zero in those questions and you submit it. You can change it later. I will uh, validate it later for you guys. Hush put all in one message, otherwise there will be too many messages. Okay, uh, I think we'll go ahead with the next part. Or do you guys need still need another five minutes? Giving you five minutes, so 12.5, I will move on to the next section. Minu and Ashish, I need to see your uh, inputs also. You are the smart guys from the Ventura Franchise Network.
if you can't think of 10 you can think of only seven right now that is also fine if you can think of three that is also fine if you can think of 15 all the better it doesn't really matter what it is important is to get your thought process going so that uh, we can uh, you know start moving along the stocks which we think are multi baggers so here how the process we will follow is that whatever we learn in the next uh, 15 weeks we will apply to these stocks individually and you will make your own judgment as to the multi bagger potential of those stocks so in effect what will happen is that you will be uh, selecting stocks by the criteria of elimination we will come to that later. Shravan, uh, I have not uh, seen your list coming through. Webber, nice going. So is Srikant. Srikant, you got nine. Saurabh, Sisodia got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Umang has only three. Umang, you need to work harder on your brains. Abina, very good, yeah. You got all your 10 topics in. Hiren has submitted. Minu, uh, if, if it's not working, 7 onward, just uh, type it in WhatsApp. Saurabh, that's awesome. Got your list. Nirupam, I got your list. Oh, Nirupam is able to toy, type right till 10. So Nirupam has figured a way out on the uh, Google Doc. Hush, Som Distilleries, Kinfa Life Sciences, that is a new one for me. <coughs> Gopinath has added, uh, interestingly, is uh, Make Money Organics. And you are quite bullish on GVK PIL. So last two minutes, in case you don't finish in the next two minutes, then we will move on to the next section. Take your time, doesn't matter, you can feel later. Super Ashish, I can see you have got interestingly Glenmark. Shravan, Karnatak Bank, Loris Labs, Tata Coffee, these strike me. Minu Grindwell Norton, that is striking me. Arun is all with uh, mid cap and small caps. Zen Technologies, Oceana Biotech. Great Uman, you are getting another three stocks, so that's six. Okay, Prashant, you got your 12 stocks. Uh, what is this TGV SRAAC? Can you uh, 
can you send me the full name of that neha has got sun pharma biocon reliance infibeam minda karur ways have interesting okay uh, should we move on now what do you guys say is been 5 uh, minute milap nice ten stocks navkar cop sarla poly shell engineering yeah we are moving on now so it was edison who said that 10000 hours of study minimum is required to be a master in fact every time he failed on its one of his experiments to uh, conduct electricity people would laugh at him and he would say well that is one way that i have eliminated which will not work so th- that is a kind of positive mentality and we work with that mentality where we eliminate stocks we don't judge stocks we eliminate stocks on the basis of a criteria and we are left with a universe which will be a possible multi bagger stock so from these 10 stocks i guess uh, we will be filtering down to maybe 2 3 or maybe 4 names which would be multi baggers for each person however we will do it faster and due to our revolutionized teaching methodology i think it will work much faster than 10000 hours you won't need be needing 10000 hours to do that right so at a later date once when the entire course work has been assimilated when we are like 60% through or let's say when we are done with the ninth week uh, we will form smaller groups of four to six participants and each one will be assigned one case study so as a group we will pick up one stock and we will this uh, and we will do these case studies and group learning will ensure that you do not flounder and your learning will get accelerated so what will happen is as a group you will select one stock that we will research so using the good offices uh, for research i will connect on a con call with the management uh, i will conduct the con call you will be in listen only mode we will take notes uh, you may even ask questions if the management is comfortable with that i'll try to find the management which is uh, interested in uh, enter- uh, entertaining us and uh, that company will Uh, will be the source of study for your group so if we have got 40 participants uh there would be totally eight groups and eight stock ideas which ninth week onwards we will uh be doing as a part of group work and taking up total exhaustive application of the tell dimension investment toolbox uh to zero in on the multi bagger potential of these stocks so welcome to the uh uh welcome to the 12 dimension investment toolbox srikant i thank you for your uh, comment srikant says this is a good one arranging con call with the management yes without practical experience what is the point in uh undertaking any kind of learning so as i said the secret to extraordinary investing lies in the 12 dimension investment toolbox and an investment idea has extremely high probability of turning out to be a multi bagger which passes the rigorous testing of the 12 dimensions so let's go through these 12 dimensions and uh, what each dimension represents so i have done my own calibration based on how i would uh, i would evaluate a management so when you think of a business what comes to mind it is the promoters it is the management team the various stakeholders or the shareholders and what i what i have coined a form a uh, uh, terminology called growth hunger there should be hunger in an organization to grow without this hunger it is not possible to take the company from one level to the other and the entire promoter the management and leadership team and the stakeholders should all be aligned in this direction 
and it should be a collective call to go in the direction which the management foresees be it scaling up the business doing global uh, tie ups forming jvs entering allied businesses uh, uh going downstream going upstream uh picking up the entire uh, segment or entering new businesses so companies that grow laterally horizontally vertically and who also disrupt innovate and invest will be the stocks which will always feature to be multi baggers so this is very important there has to be constant movement and energy to grow the company in a particular direction okay once we have assimilated leadership and all these factors then we will look at the business prospects of the stock in nature and the opportunity heat map what do i mean by this so here we are trying to place the company into a a venn diagram where we talk of business prospects in the sense what is the industry and the opportunity matrix that is available to the company so let us say uh, uh that uh, self driving cars is a new opportunity so when you are getting into it what is the size of the market so what we are talking of is more of an industry and a uh market analysis and then we put it in place as an opportunity heat map so what happens is there would be a number of uh a number of avenues for a company to grow right and this could be in the same industry as well so let us take the example of self driving cars within the self driving cars you could do the complete self driving car or you could do the software of a self driving car or you could do the manufacturing of the batteries or you could do with the uh system of the community that surrounds it so everything brings along with its new business opportunities and what we do is these opportunities that are available to us we kind of lay them down rank them in terms of their growth prospects our abilities and how best we can traverse uh that opportunity having initially zeroed in on a stock which has got the leadership then getting the business prospect and opportunity heat map right we will then go into what we call the business readiness so your company now the focus is all on your company how well you have done in the past what you are doing now and how your the company that you have selected is there on the growth curve okay so we are looking for companies which are which have been growing well and are going to ramp up so for a multi bagger stock what you need is a j curve or what you call the hockey stick effect there has to be a there has to be a kicker in the growth path of a company without that you will never get a multi bagger so a company which is growing at 10% top line 10% bottom line and continuing to do that is a great stock a very steady compounder but what we are looking for is a company which can up the ante on the growth curve and grow well right build profits multiply revenues and uh, have a non linear effect to the profitability where profitability moves faster than the revenue opportunity the fourth category in the investment toolbox is peer set analysis and evaluation so just analyzing our own company and working on it doesn't uh, really work for us we have to evaluate how the company is doing in relation to other businesses who are other companies which are having the similar business so what we call is competitive peer set analysis so here we will be studying the uh, strategies the tactics their business models their growth models and how all these companies fare up and then we are going to evaluate all these com our company vis a vis to their opportunities uh, the growth barriers maybe the uh, 
maybe the factors that the company needs to overcome and whether they have the confidence to overcome so this is what we are going to do in the fourth step of the analysis so mind you so far we have not been looking at the numbers and in the first four dimensions we have only factored in the business background so we are talking of the leadership we are talking of the business prospects the industry where it is operating how well your company is in terms of strategy and readiness of the growth curve and then we are analyzing a company through a peer set analysis based on market share market potential uh, competitive intensity our strategies and tactics to uh, take on this uh, management and grow right so these are the first four be uh, four points which will be based on how the business is ready to take on the forthcoming uh, future once we are done with these we will then look at five parameters which are more quantitative in nature so we are going to uh, do a past performance analysis based on the previously what has happened across business cycles uh, in the peaks in the depressions how the company has managed has the company been able to grow despite slowing industry has it been able to maintain margins has the profitability been there is there any kind of uh, operating leverage present then we will be besides doing the performance analysis we will also be focusing 5 years out to understand how well the company will perform so this is our understanding based on the con call with the management and our deductions where we will where we will be doing the quantitative forecasting technologies and here too we will be doing a best case scenario uh, a going concern scenario which is a kind of a normal growth 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 rate and what is the worst kind of scenario that can uh, happen right so we have three kinds of scenarios one is where the company is in a sweet spot the other is cruising nicely just as we planned and third is when the when the opportunity gets tough like let us say we have this global meltdown where interest rates in the us are now moving up on the 10 year yield and uh, liquidity is going to get tight and when these kind of situations have happened and valuations of virtually every asset class is hitting the roof how well will the company react so what if the growth rate slows down how will our company perform what if we go enter a, a situation which is a kind of a bear market where there is slow down what if there is a uh, non bjp government how will it act so what we are going to do is we are going to focus for three scenarios a super super duper uh, outlook uh, as is going i look trudging along nicely and the third is a doomsday kind of scenario in that how will the company perform so based on this three levels of forecasting that we do we will be able to gauge and assign probabilities to any event that is occurring and then we will also have in place with us what is the worst that can happen so if your growth company let us say is growing at 20% and starts suddenly now because of change environment come to 10% growth then is it a good thing or a bad thing obviously you wouldn't like it but if it is the best thing that is happening to the company and it is far better than peers then you are in a you are still maintaining that uh, dominance and while this is happening is your market share growing uh, is your profitability growing uh, are we churning our business to reflect a new economy so these are the kind of things that we will uh, be analyzing so to just give you a, a kind of a taste of what is happening is let us take the case of nit okay so it had got a training business and suddenly from the, the software training it moved on it moved into a different facet of training so they were losing clients on one side and adding one or for that example let's take the case of tcs where legacy businesses are collapsing new businesses are growing and that is not apparent in the top line because there is a sizable churn old business degrowing new business growing up 
and there will come a point when the old business starts slow degrowth starts slowing now and the new business starts picking up so these are what we call inflection points and from there how the company is moving so once we have done this detailed kind of analysis through a spreadsheet forecasting the forecasting the uh, the p and l the balance sheet and the cash flows and tracking all the ratios then we move on to one step which is more tactical so that one step which is tactical we will be doing through the sixth dimension which is progress tracking monitoring validation and reassessment so what happens you have pre prepared a forecast so what do you do after that do you sit tight and let the story play out you could do that if you are confident but when you are investing a sizable amount of your portfolio in that kind of a stock you would obviously want to be monitoring it so on the parameters that the stock has been growing you will see the quarterly performance of the stocks how well they are doing are they tracking your uh, estimates in terms of forecasts uh, then if it is not doing then we will validate whether it needs to be adjusted a bit and then we have a reassessment on the on the likely outcome of that so let us say in fi20 you had you were forecasting 100 rupees uh, eps on a stock and the you have assumed a 15 multiple so you were looking at a target of 1500 today the price is quoting at 600 and you are thinking that you are smooth selling with a three bagger okay now let us think that the there is a change in the government if there is a change in the government policy is changed there is a little bit of uncertainty growth slows down people are not investing people are very on spend spending and then when the scenario changes slightly you need to reassess what will happen so maybe you will say that okay i am not growing at 10% i need to uh, tone down the revenue growth and the and let us say the company was setting up a a super duper blockbuster product and that is kind of delayed by 2 years right so you are very confident of the progress of the company but you need to build in that two years slow down and you need to take your focus a little bit further away so maybe you would not get a 100 rupee eps in 20 and you could get it in 22 so your growth rate slows down so these are the kind of little bit of validation and reassessments that we need to do then obviously the seventh parameter is my favorite you know i am always looking for these things in multi bagger stocks does it have operating leverage and what is the moat so what do we mean by operating leverage so there would be a scenario where the company is growing its stop line at 10% the profitability the ebitda margins uh, ebitda is growing at say 15% which is 5% more than the top line and the bottom line is growing at 25% these kind of businesses is what i call operating leverage so for a, a linear growth in revenue you have a non linear uh, correlation of the growth in profitability and net profit of a stock these are fantastic stories to play out because small change in top line gives you a huge effect on the bottom line and essentially we are always looking for these stocks because they have the maximum potential to be multi bagger along with this we also need a kind of a defense right so you need to know that if you keep growing this fast why would uh, competition not get attracted and move into the same line of business so there we need to assess what are our defenses or what is our lead leading technological competitive edge that we have that will keep your stock uh safeguarded maybe in a time duration or from technological competence way ahead of the market so let us say you there is a huge infrastructure boom going on and companies are get in the epc space and what if you are a connoisseur of 3d printing and you start suddenly doing one floor in like one week so technically you are putting up a building in seven weeks a seven story building and maybe taking another 3 to 4 months to uh finish it off so you're putting up a seven story structure in 11 months whereas the convention is to do it in 2 years so then what is your moat out here your moat is your technological uh, advantage let us say you are a 
a company which is into the infra stage uh, having a unique ability to do epc so what would happen when others are floundering you excel in that you excel in implementation you have got good control on processes take the example of au small bank though late into the phase it is one of the most sought of the stocks primarily because the its processes and systems which are there put in place are world class and they work like me uh, so pop uh, so, like an orchestra so once we have done this operating leverage seen the moat and seen it from the perspective of the industry that you know this is the best that uh, you could get in the given space of five six stocks where you have good tracking excellent forecast operating leverage moat is in place then we come to the function of valuation potential and re rating so so this is also a subset of the operating leverage so you have revenue growing faster you have profitability growing better you have net profit going better you have return ratios building on and in and in keeping in sync with all this what happens is that uh the street recognizes the potential of this stock and it gets an overcrowded trade and then the stock really moves so what happens not only is the p eps of the stock being uh, pushed up because of the performance of the company but the market starts re-rating it so a classic example would be your lead recovery stocks you know nothing has changed in their fundamentals but the market has started valuing them based on the multiple the the uh the market has realized the potential of these businesses being long term and being absolutely essential businesses so for the business of lead batteries you know recovery of lead is very important and these companies which are there into the recycling of lead have suddenly been got re-rated so their eps from uh, from the pe uh, multiples from single digits have actually gone to 20 times so this is what i mean and if you add this kind of re-rating to the operating lever is that we are talking of boy the stock is really really going to go through the roof having uh, focused on the leadership and the business background of the company having looked at factors which affect their uh, numerical numbers and the stock price then we come to the fact of finally doing the stock selection and other factors which are essential for a complete uh, multi bagger investment system so having so when you have selected these 10 stocks right each one of us has put in place 10 stocks which you think are multi baggers so having done this kind of work using the dimensions 1 to 8 on each of these stocks now you will uh, apply the stock selection through criteria of el elimination and based on the above eight multiples we will definitely get three stocks or four stocks or even maybe five which have got really really competitive advantages good future solid background and perfect combination of business management opportunity and valuation so the stocks which fall into the the so the stocks which are less likely to do well they are eliminated and what remains is your nest egg where you would want to put your money into the stock now before doing that if you notice all this work we have been doing through the process of sitting at a desk and a uh, reading up on the internet or uh, talking to a few people Uh, assessing based on our evaluation but what is more important is to get your feet wet and you need to hit the road get out of your office and do what we call the scuttlebutt so when i talk of scuttlebutt what do i mean is we actually go out into the field in real life and go and meet with managements uh, their uh, distributors suppliers we sample their products we see how the market is responding to their products what are the different uh, opportunities that are coming up so maybe i have a pen pencil and someone is coming up with a uh, so someone came with an ipad 
and someone came with a mini ipad and uh, then there was a phone with the writing device and you have a recording device uh, which writes on its own so these are the various various options of essentially performing the same activity so how is your company's product vis-a-vis -vis brand uh, technological competence and distribution and uh, mainly is the uh, mainly is the user preference how is it going if all these things fall in place on all the work that you have done then you have personally convinced yourself that yes this is the stock that i would go by and other two things that i talk of are ardor and zeal so mind you this is not a very uh, this requires an extra effort on your part you need to connect you need to move out of your comfort zone i would go and meet with a if i was doing analysis of the chemical industry sitting in bombay will i get in my office here in thane will i get any uh, understanding of that no i need the order when i talk of order i mean the effort i need to take the effort of calling up a trader in kalba devi connecting with him going and meeting him doing a small meeting traveling to gujarat going into the the heartland of the industry industrial belt checking things out talking to these people connecting with people in china you know because china is the biggest competitor what anything china does you need to track and monitor very well and for this you need to take this effort and to do all this you need a lot of zeal lot of enthusiasm and you need that go get a attitude to get it done so once you have done this analysis you have put in the numbers you have valued the stocks and you have come to a criteria through elimination you need to revalidate by going into the field doing the scuttlebutt and revalidating that everything that you have done and what the market feels is also the market potential of what you say putting your ear to the rails to understand that the train is moving in the right direction will get you going this is what is required this is the things that ordinary investors don't do and this is what multi bagger investors do so let me give you an example of vijay kade we have heard that he is a very great investor so what he will do is if he meets a company and likes it he will go and meet all the companies in that segment check their product out in the market assess all the products and then formulate his own view on whether this company can survive and move ahead and get it uh, uh and hit the jackpot so between thought action and result uh you are choosing the best stock to invest in and that will come only through these 10 steps having been taken but mind you if you have these entire 10 dimensions uh, well covered and if there is something wrong with your mind okay what will happen is you will invest in a great stock but get out at a 40% return and then you will regret and regret as the stock keeps moving higher and you will get virtually frozen in time because now you are no longer able to invest how many of us have had this uh, have been in this situation i have been in some and you too would probably have been and you would have identified a stock but not acted for it for the fear of losing uh, money so we get so this fear is something that uh, prevents us from buying uh, stocks where we have conviction in and there is another fear with that fear is of greed so what happens is that you will not get out of a stock at the right time primarily because you believe that the stock could go higher what happens is that we do all our analysis and the analysis is pointing to peaking of everything and in that uh, enthusiasm that you know better things are yet to come and good times last for a lifetime kind of attitude that we develop what happens is that uh the greed gets into our eyes and we kind of forget everything else so we need to work with our mindset and develop a uh attitude of being 
very very cold in terms of analysis there are a couple of things that we have to understand that the the business of investing is a boring business and the business of trading is a very very uh, entertaining business so we are in the job of making money we are in the business of getting wealth and we are not getting uh, we are not into the business of getting entertained if you want to get entertained you might as well visit a circus or you may go and watch a movie or on netflix if you are a savvy internet user you can watch your best serials that that should be your entertainment a, a football game a cricket game a badminton game a run in the evening is your entertainment multi bagger investing is not your entertainment and to do this segregation have a cool mind work dispassionately we need to overcome fear and greed and for that i have put together a psychological assessment test which will validate your scores and what kind of attitudinal adjustments you need to make in your investment psyche so that you stay married to in multi bagger stocks and exit them at the right time right so marriage and divorce are part of multi bagger investing last but not the least we need to take into uh we need to accept that as technology ai machine learning and the new new breed of technology that is uh, iot uh, uh virtual virtual industry come into play business as is practiced is never going to be the same just imagine i am talking to a computer screen and you are uh, corresponding with me on whatsapp would it have been possible before i don't think that earlier the communication was two way so we had two way communication on the phone then we moved to the uh, internet through email then we came to short messaging and now we are into multi bagger multimedia messaging so this kind of innovation which has come about has actually disrupted business as it was practiced 75 years earlier and as we go for the disruption is going to get so immense and so uh, all encompassing and uh, affect every uh, facet of our life that uh, it is business is never going to be the same disruption as it is called will be the order of the day and companies who accept disruption who disrupt themselves before they can get disrupted are going to be the technologies of the future and what happens in this is that companies who are on this disruptive path become either you have a one off trade either you are very successful or you are not and the one who is successful is the winner who takes it all so let us look at a few stories uber or maybe airbnb or you talk of facebook google snapchat apple these are all companies which have disrupted themselves they have disrupted industries and they are continually disrupting themselves again to take on the future which is so technologically intense that uh, it is going to leave uh, us way behind so companies which have this dna of 60 investing in the future are going to be the multi baggers in fact if you see the if you see google apple facebook and amazon are the largest companies and their market share of the dow is only increasing right you have alibaba tencent uh, you have airb airbnb uber ola all these self driving technologies that are there they are really new species of companies and investing in these type of companies uh, which are the future requires a special kind of mindset which we call the 6d investing more about this as we go ahead in fact we will spend one whole week on this and i have also drafted a module which will take us through this process of integrating uh, 
technology into our war chest going out there finding a uh, startup companies where we could invest and take it from there and although there are 12 dimensions in the investment toolbox there is one which i have added today uh, and that is what i call portfolio concentration and allocation this requires a slightly different mention so from the 12 dimensions just like we have uh, 12 uh, signs of the zodiac and there is a 13 sign in the lunar zodiac similarly this portfolio concentration and allocation is a 13th dimension which i have just added so this is called a uh, portfolio concentration and allocation so often we are regretting that uh, when we buy a stock should i buy 5% should i buy 10% should i make it make a four stock portfolio should i have a 25 stock portfolio and even if i have a 25 stock portfolio or a four, four stock portfolio how much money to allocate across stocks because this portfolio allocation and concentration can make all the difference in your wealth meters so let us say you invested only 1 rupee in facebook and you invested 99 in in uh, infosys well my friend your portfolio would have not been that good had you invested even 40 rupees in facebook and 60 rupees in infosys so this is just to give you an example i know it's a slightly stacking but that is what i wanted to add so let us say you had invested in your portfolio of 100 rupees 10 rupees in uh bajaj finance after the 2000 meltdown the stock was 136 rupees today it is 16000 plus and that means your portfolio would have been your 100 rupee portfolio would have been worth more than 10000 so huge returns more than 100 times all due to one stock and essentially we will work out a, a system where we can do the portfolio concentration and allocation and uh, go ahead with that so friends uh, i am going to now uh, take a small break uh, right now the time is 12:42 i will join you back at 12:50 and in the meantime uh, if you could uh, whatsapp me your queries on this i will take a toilet break and get back to you so be around
अरे मेरे को थोड़ा पानी चाहिए था अच्छा दरवाजा खोलो ना मैं बाहर आता हूँ
ओके गाइस आई एम बैक एंड टू टेक अभिनव क्वेश्चन ऑन आर वी यूजिंग द बॉटम अप अप्रोच वेर वी डायरेक्टली फोकस ऑन द स्टॉक आर वी नॉट लुकिंग एट सम सनशाइन सेक्टर्स इफ यू कुड डुवेल ऑन दैट एस्पेक्ट अभिनव वी आर गोइंग टू यूज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टॉप डाउन एंड बॉटम अप सो वॉट वी विल बी डूइंग इज वी विल see when you pick up a stock what happens is let us take you selected an arbitrary stock uh let us say you took up an arbitrary stock to invest in let us say you picked up the sector of uh, again coming back to self driving cars so obviously it's a sunshine sector and uh, when we look at that uh we are also looking at say maruti so we will be seeing maruti in conjunction with the future which is going to be self driving cars so when we do that what happens we are exposed to 10 other companies which are in the self driving segment right now what will happen is that that will lead to sunshine sector and then you can reassess your uh, stocks that you want to pick so you picked up let us say you picked up maruti you picked up tisco and you picked up uh, starlight opticals as three stocks in your portfolio if you had picked up maruti and you went into the self driving domain there you will find that there are number of companies which will maruti will do well because it's got a dominant uh, theme but there will be some companies which are there which are doing even much faster for example hindustan copper nobody would have thought that it would be a play on the self driving car segment but copper goes 3x in more is required than what you read in a local car correct so uh, and then suddenly hindustan copper becomes a very very attractive play so what you do is you drop maruti which was into self driving car and you replace it with uh, with uh, hindustan copper or what you would do you would have a or what what another thing which we will be looking in stock selection and all that portfolio allocation is that you would take self driving as a theme and maybe you have two or three stocks in that right so it all depends on it's a very individual kind of thing and it depends on that but these are the ways that we would be looking at Okay, now Umang is asking: Is on what basis we should select the stock on the basis of what's going to be the star in future or the share which is the star in the present? Umang, so that was your, your question is also in sync with what uh, Abhina was asked. So you may start with shares which are doing good, but you come across a stock which is expected to do well. You take it up for analysis, isn't it? Uh. Uh, what i would like to say deepak to you and to the others who are asking for a change in the days is that i have given great thought to this uh, schedule and then only placed it so there was thursday and friday is a good time period you know thursday and saturday i thought that worked best earlier i wanted to do wednesday and saturday but i thought thurs either ways it's going to be uh, okay with me so i think let us go with thursday and saturday it's a good schedule uh, guys who really miss a session can always log in and uh, and you know this entire recording is available so even whatever communication is happening on whatsapp i'm sharing with you on the webinar so i guess thursday and saturday is going fine with everyone and uh, uh, ashish just to tell you is that uh, actually i wanted to keep it 3 hours but i got it down to 2 and 1/2 hours we can do even 2 hours but uh, there's too much to cover so to keep it in 15 weeks if i make it 2 hours then i won't feel i'm doing justice 60 hours is not enough uh, 80 hours is too long so i kept it at uh, uh, 15 5 or 75 hours so i'm trying to fit this into 75 hours if we extend a few then i think we'll have to go ahead with that so that's that on that part 
so okay friends i am going to take another uh, two minutes before i start my watch is showing 1256 so if you guys want to take a two minute walk or breather please come back after that 1258 is when i will connect with you again uh you know i had recent uh, very long ago i read a book in which uh i read a book in which uh there are two characters and one person is asking the other that think of any activity and there are only two outcomes to that activity why you take it up the reasons why you do it it is either for fun or entertainment or you have a learning experience out of it so just think about it nothing is beyond fun and learning and it is my endeavor that you will have the best time you ever spent having both fun and learning by attending these classes so you will have fun uh building a portfolio which will give you tons of money and you will have learning to build up that portfolio so it's a vicious circle like a whirlpool it will keep on uh grasping you and uh before you know it you have launched yourself so now we move on to the first investment toolbox dimension which is leadership team stakeholders and growth hunger okay so if you look at this uh, business as i told you who runs the show is equally important as to which business you are looking at so typically we have here a we have here a matrix where pro where you have promoter quality so you have good promoter and a bad promoter and we have business quality where a good business and a bad business so essentially you get four quadrants which are good businesses run by good managements or a good business but which is with a bad management a business which is bad but run by a great uh, management and a business which is bad and has got even poor promoter quality so this red box we avoid these businesses at any cost okay if you come to the green box which is the sweetest spot that you can think of which is a great quality company and with a great business so let us take for example infosys or tcs you have the best business you have the best uh, promoters and uh, this and everything is there for you in that area 
But what really happens is that all these are already discounted. They have got high valuations. And so they, they are wealth creators, they're steady compounders, but, uh, but you are not catching them young. You're buying them at rich valuations. And when the discovery has happened, the whole world is in it. And to my mind, that's not a bad investment. If the growth momentum of a, in a TCS can happen at 15 to 20% on a longer term, then so can this. Can everyone keep a give a heads up if they can all see the slide which says who runs the show is equally important as to which business you are looking to invest? Can you see now? Woman, can you see? Okay, guys, can you see me now? <coughs> okay, you can still see the only the 12 dimension slide. Uh, Okay, now can you see the uh, 12 dimension slide? Okay, now we can all see section three investment toolbox dimension one leadership team stakeholders and growth hangers. Superb. Okay, I have all heads up from everyone. So let's go ahead with this. So, uh, okay, I'm coming back to that who runs the show is equally important as to which business you are looking at. 
right so we have a quadrant here so we have a quadrant where we have got a promoter quality which is good and bad promoters and we have business quality good and bad businesses so a business which falls in the first quadrant that is good promoter and good business is obviously the ones where common sense will tell you we'd have to be invested but what happens is that the growth story has obviously been discovered and that is not to say that the stocks will not continue to perform businesses will which perform will continue to grow but that operating leverage and that effect of p re rating you will not get in these stocks because their uh, their p's have already been discovered the growth will come to you from these two quadrants where you have a good promoter in a in a bad business environment now if we can do great things out here disrupt this segment and grow something then you will get a lot of operating leverage and re-rating and that will grow or you have a, a uh, so this is what i said uh, a bad uh, business environment now now can you see guys I don't know why this is not coming. Just hang on, please. Okay, we can all see now. Okay, so woman uh, can see who runs the business slide. Can everyone else see those slides? Meenu, Ashish. Okay, guys. So as I said, businesses which are in the businesses which are in the green corner are the best to be in. As I gave you the example of. Uh, promoter quality and tcs however businesses where the promoter quality is bad and the business en environment is good or where for example where the business environment is bad but the promoter quality is good this is where you are going to get opportunities right so let me explain what i mean by that so let us say you are in a sunrise industry for example as he said again sticking with these uh, self driving cars and you have fiat okay now that or you take the example of tata motors they have not done great great uh, really well in the indian business right with the indian cars okay uh, <clears throat> but but in being in a good business if they can get their act together then definitely the re-rating will happen or you take the second example where we talked about the business environment being bad but the promoter quality is good so here is the case of tisco you have a good promoter but the business quality was bad right and when the business turns around when they do better things in this business in terms of costing cost efficiency in terms of uh, product uh, rationalization product enrichment uh, any kind of innovation and process driven innovation then the numbers will come even if they are not coming well in the industry and these are the two sweet spots which will get you the big money you know so these are the two segments where you should focus on whether which are let us say which are under the radar you know so if i look at kpit which is there in the it space KPIT is doing some great things with their uh, self driving business and they also done a little bit of restructuring where they merged with the company and now they are looking to demerge so these are the stories where you will be uh, on the lookout and we'll always be on the lookout for sub stocks so the stock selection process in multi bag multi bag stock selection it is important 
to know who is running the business and how well it is run. This can be your starting point or the ending point of your analysis. What do I mean by this? So we can start with this. So you pick up a stock and you start doing your work on the background of the promoters and how the business is doing. And you come to the conclusion that it falls into the red quadrant. So your it is all, not only was it a starting point, it was your ending point. Get my point. So all these companies which fall into the red segment are to be thrown out. You can visit them again if some other things happen to them, but they are definitely a no, no. Uh, so the stock select, uh, Devgar, we will be coming to how to check background of promoters. We're coming to that. This is what this section is all about. So the stock selection process should start with who are the promoters and who are the owners who is running the business quality and pedigree of the management team. So you have an owner who owns the company along with the shareholders. Then there is somebody who's running the company. Now the person who's running the company need not be the promoter himself. It could be a professional management. Then we check out the quality and the pedigree of the management team. What do we mean by that? Uh, the management team is a function of sales, marketing, distribution, finance, leadership, HR, processes, IT. So all these things are to be known. And we should have a quality and a pedigree of the management team. So what do I mean by this is that let us say a person who is a kick as a marketing guy, he joins you. So what we need to do is we need to go and assess his pedigree. When we talk in terms of pedigree concept, which college has he graduated from? Where has he worked prior to this? How many years of experience he has? Which industries does he have experience? Is he a generalist or a specialist? What does he get to the table? Okay. And how does he fit in with the management culture? What is his uh, employment remuneration? What are the uh, uh, stock ops that he's been provided with? All these kind of understandings that we get now go a long way in judging the prom uh, management, uh, promoter, owner, uh, management, and then we come to the next step, which is business process and corporate governance. More about corporate governance later, but as I mentioned to you earlier, a business process or a system which is in place determines the success or failure of a business. So if you do not have a great business process or system of doing business, then you cannot really scale up. Okay. So we need to check on that. So you need to see the robustness of their uh, trading platform, uh, how well, how well their process are streamlined. Are there checks and balances in place? Is there scope for uh, fraud? Is this is there scope for misgovernance? Have these uh, loopholes been plugged? This is the kind of analysis which we do. Okay. And this is the part of investing that requires more qualitative inputs than analysis. Right? So this is a little theoretical. It, it's uh, bordering on the uh, arbitrary decision making. But yes, we have to get qualitative inputs. And to get these qualitative inputs, we have put a number of processes in place ourselves. So let's see what they are. Okay, so now this is the slide which talks about business structures. If you can not see it, please let me know. Okay, so we have a diversified network group. So, you know, if you see, I've drawn a blue box around these three, uh, around this large Venn diagram, which talks about diversified networks, which are about widely held companies, state owned companies, and family owned companies. Right? Can you see now? Now, can you see? Okay, fine. Okay, so what actually what is happening when I'm moving my cursor now, it is going off. 
So if you can see that blue box in which uh, these three types of businesses have been highlighted, these are primarily the three types of business which we have state owned, which the government runs. Then there are family owned businesses, which most of Indian businesses and you have well held, widely held companies. So when I talk of widely held company, we'll talk of all the banks, ICICI bank, where there is no clear promoter. They all professionally run or take the case of LNT. LNT does not have a single uh, owner group which owns the stock. You know, it is very, very widely held amongst various uh, teams. Okay. And in what happens is that in state owned business groups, ownership is legally with the uh, uh, citizens and they are dictated by the politicians who are there in the power. So it is imperative to know what is the dispensation of the present incumbent government towards state owned businesses. So let me digress a bit out here. You know, what happens is that there is a common theme going around that, you know, you should never invest in PSU stocks. Haven't we all heard that? So why is it? Because their performances are uh, bestowed at the whims and fancies of the ruling power. So when the UPA was in government, they had virtually destroyed in 10 years, they had destroyed Air India when they gave it to the then telecom minister, uh, then uh, uh, the minister uh, of airlines, uh, Praful Patel, he actually stripped airlines to the state that is in today. Or you look at Bhel and Coal India. If I remember, Bhel in, used to have 50,000 crores worth of cash. Today, it's got barely less than 5,000. Or you talk of Coal India, it got 75,000 75, crores of what? Cash chest. Today, it is less. It's far less. Or for that matter, MTNL and BSNL, they've been literally, uh, uh, you know, gone underground. MTNL is totally gone underground. So the largest franchise of the country, Delhi and Mumbai, in which MTNL used to operate, has been totally demolished. But then you have the UPA government come into play and just look at how the uh, all the companies in Gujarat are performing. You talk about uh, uh, all these Gujarat State Fertilizer, Gujarat GNFC, GSFC, you talk of GMDC. So, you know, where you have a, a government mechanism which is pro-business and supporting their state-owned enterprises, uh, there the businesses do well. So you have to see it in line with uh, the consonance between the, the politicians and the bureaucrats. So essentially what happens is that today, if BJP were to be out of power, then I would really assess my portfolio in terms of whether I should be investing in state owned enterprises, right? On the other hand, if the UPA thinks that if they were to come to power and they think that divestment is an important uh, arm of their uh, policy, then, you know, be sure that these uh, state owned enterprises will do very well. Then when we come to the family owned businesses. So what are the family owned businesses are the ones which you inherit from your father or from your grandfather. So there are three to four uh, uh, generations which are involved in the business and you have extended families or you have two friends joining together to form a business that would be also be categorized as a, a family owned businesses. Actually, if you go to Sina in uh, uh, there's a famous cliche which says that the first generation builds the second generation consolidates and the third de generation destroys the family business. Ironic, isn't it? Although 85% of companies in India are family run and employ over 57% of the Indian workforce, just 13% survived in the third generation. And they usually disintegrate due to generation conflict. So which is the biggest, uh, what happens is that when your aspirations are not in line with that, in sync with that of the business, these businesses generally tend to lead to uh, uh, family uh, settlements and then they are disturbed. Right. So how do you classify a business, whether it is family owned? So any business where the CEO, MD and chairman 
are also shareholders and hold more than 20% stake, you can call it a family business. Okay, this is my definition of a family business. So 20% is a weight in terms of voting power as well as in uh, terms of holding, you know. So here there is a what I called a hack. You need to check to see how old the business is and which generation is at the helm. So uh, to give you examples is that take the money business, the reliance business. Okay. When you look at the reliance business, uh, first you had Dhirubhai Ammani who took that business from 1970s to 2000, right? The company really, really grew. Then came the time period from 2003 to 2008 when they had a family settlement, right? Uh, you had a split between the two brothers. But because the bull market was going on that time from 2003 to 2008, and uh, there was a fancy for these stocks, the businesses did well. But when the axe hit the grind or when we saw the business uh, environment change from an extremely bullish phenomenon where the delivery of the business was in question, we had a divergence, right? Uh, Mukesh Ambani, the better brother, consolidated business to make it the richest company, while actually Anil Ambani, barring for Reliance uh, Capital, destroyed all the businesses that he was involved in. Absolutely. And does it surprise you that Madhukela left Anil Ambani a few months back? Okay. And Vijay uh, and Singhania has resigned from the post of C CIO uh, to pursue his own of own uh, interest on the verge of Anil Ambani's son taking on the business. So Dhirubhai Ambani, Anil Ambani and his son, the third generation, is actually fitting in with this cliche that the third generation destroyed the business. Okay, sorry for this call. Just a moment. Someone is playing a nuisance. Continuously calling up. I'm going to put it on the silent. Right. Okay. Anyway, so what you need to do is you need to see how old a business is and which generation is at the helm. So if you were to look at uh, some other business, Reliance was a classic case. If you look at all these uh, Modi's or the Birla's, you know, where the third generation is involved, there's a lot of turbulence happening. So typically uh, 15 to 17 years is a kind of a period when generations do change because a person by the time he manages a business well, he's well into his 30s, right? And uh, by the time he's 50 years old, his uh, second generation is quite uh, there. So 35 would be 20 years. So you'd have after 15 to 20 years, you'd have one generation change. And maybe after another 30 years later, from the origins period, you'd have another generation change. So you should, we should be tracking all these uh, factors in the background. Mind you, this is not taught anywhere else. So here we have a, a slide. Can you see this slide? Where the India's top 20 businesses by groups of assets since the 1950s to 2016 has been dis displayed. Uh, just see, Tata's have always been number one. Birla's have been number two. But there is a huge shuffle happening. You know, Anil Ambani in 2016 was uh, fourth. Okay. Yeah. So if you see in this uh, slide, what you can see is that the structures are changing. So right 1950 to 1990 is a 40 year period. And from 1990 to 2016 is a 25-26 year period. See how they have all changed. We have, if you just see number 18, there's a stark contrast, Kirloskar Nanda Axis Bank. 
or we go higher to number 10 jk singhani and tvs mahindra so you know nothing lasts forever and new leaders new business environments and new uh, uh, aspirants will take over so the guys who have got very strong organizational skills like the tatas or the birlas or even the money they have they have stayed on so has bajaj right so if you analyze the as we spoke earlier if you analyze these all these things and if you think that these managements can pull on for another 15 to 20 years then someone asked me how long can we hold on to a stock well i would say if you have the confidence that you can the visibility of you can't hear me guys now can you hear me okay so everyone can hear i think hiren can't hear me hiren can't hear and minu can't hear okay hiren you can hear now minu can you try again okay great so the uh, it's good that we have this whatsapp going on you know so that uh, we have spontaneous uh, eradication of any kind of uh, disturbances so this is what i wanted to point out if you can get a handle on the ownership of a company and if you can say that you know this is a winner management and they're doing all the things right then as long as that management is in play you know you can stay invested with the stock so uh, uh, you would probably we all hear stories about how hdfc or infosys or all these companies have rewarded shareholders so if you can be with a winner management and if you can take a decision on the fact that a management in, is a winner believe you me two to three investments in a lifetime is all that you need if you can get that wipro or you can get that uh, uh, stock you are set you know let's take the case of reliance group okay today by the implementation of their geo network they have virtually uh, amazed the world with their ability to enter a new segment scale it up okay and build world class products today their network is good for uh, 4g as well as 5g they have huge patents in place they have destroyed the conventional business model they have become leaders in the thought process and they're very very well positioned to take on the new economy when we talk of the new economy think of you know if i just purely look at the digital play of reliance so today what is the fear that array reliance is entering into the internet regime so you know you had all these stocks collapse but the moment it became clear that uh, uh, that uh, reliance is not entering the internet space you had stocks like uh, hathaway and then start doing well okay the moment you saw that the bidding war is uh, comfortable bharti and idea which were collapsing suddenly in between we saw a surge in the stocks in fact bharti was a very handsome performer over the last quarter not so much idea idea actually needs to add a lot of uh, subs which they have not done you know but you know the china factor for the globe is reliance for india so you have to watch and when you when we are talking about reliance in such a way you know what automatically follows is that this company which has got the cash chest which has got the political connectivity is here to stay and like it or not whether you are a reliance lover or a reliance hater this company will start uh, keeping on doing well and when we uh, spoke about hunger okay this is one company which has got the hunger you know they have hunger for market cap and market cap is the biggest wealth creator today so businesses which you think can sustain so what happens businesses do have their business cycles 
so you have three year up two year down again a three year up two year down but what happens is that in every business the uh, at every trough of a business cycle these companies are much better off than they were earlier take the case of sterlite vedanta from nowhere they've gone to being number 4 in 2016 and probably number 3 now are we are you there with me on this so can you identify a management young can you list salient features on the basis of which you can say that a management will perform and if the answer to all these things is yes believe you me business being what it is this is one management uh, this is one company in which if you hold the shares for a very very long period of time will definitely 100% assuredly yield you multi bagger returns and for me this factor of leadership uh, hunger and uh, promoter ownership is absolutely top of the charts even much more than the business because they will get the business they will find the business segments to invest in and they will create wealth out of thin air so now we are moving on to the next stage you know nine of the current top 20 business group owe their rise to the opportunities unleashed by the reforms so from 1956 to 97 we had industrial licensing then came in 91 came the free cross border movement of capital and opening up of sectors like banking infrastructure and telecom to the private sector so you had people come and invest in banking you had people come and invest in infrastructure and whole new breed of uh, companies was created now here the akai's heel for family businesses is the issue of succession you know if you do not have a succession plan in place your third generation will pull you down right if you think just think of it philosophically the life of a individual is close to 100 years it can be between 70 and 80 and your peak period in life is between 40 and 50 right and after that what happens you start going into the sunset and your movements become slow you become weak and then eventually until the light out of you is not snuffed out you just kind of drift right but what happens is your son and his son or the daughter when they take over they carry on the legacy of the name right similarly in this way companies need to nurture the lifespan of their organizations and one of the one of the ways to do this is to have succession planning so take the case of sipla okay sipla is actually today business which is facing a crisis of ownership because beyond the mr hamid there is he does not have any children and there is no legacy plan and there is no succession plan in place okay at least that is my judgment there may be somebody else who would have come in or take the case of khoraki wala today khoraki wala has got three sons one is running the hospital business one is running the philanthropy and the third son is just not interested in the business of uh, pharmacy so there to there there is a crisis of succession and who will take the business forward okay groups with smooth transition to the next generation have been better at taking advantage of new growth opportunities in contrast to those where succession led family squabbles are in place so what happens if you have a issue of family argument and family settlement your primary preoccupation is in solving those things than running your business and when you don't have a clear head to run your business how can you tap new growth opportunities how will you shoot troubleshoot issues which are happening in the company remember human beings are not multitasking animals we can do only one thing at a time unlike machines who can do 10 things at a time so it is very important to check for succession plan planning for family owned businesses okay uh, there is somebody who is joining in late i am just going to tell him that uh, he can listen to the recording and you know the, there is a genuine concern it is not about the level of ownership but rather how involved the family owners are in the 
in the day to day running of the business additionally family owned business will gradually lose their importance as capital availability improves and markets uh, institutions mature in india so it is for small for small young businesses it is imperative that the you know now let us understand where this kind of model works so you have a single entrepreneur business you have a family owned business and then you have a organization led business so as a rule of thumb you know until you are a fledgling business say around 100 150 crores there a family there a young business entrepreneur who remains a ceo will actually do the company good because he has entrepreneur zeal passion and willingness to take risk and go go the extra mile so he has to put in this effort to build the business and their uh, decision making is with him risk is with him and so you are able to grow well right so for a business is which are fledgling i think a uh, promoter driven model or where the uh, where is one which uh, does well now what happens as you become bigger you need systems in place otherwise you cannot manage the scale so there you need to bring in uh, professionals uh, you need to uh, you know uh, uh, kind of give away responsibility tone down your involvement you know so there's a lot of uh, hand holding that needs to be done and you need to uh, designate uh, responsibilities to other people now in this case there can be various models so you can have a family run business with a committee and a leadership is reporting to the committee or you have a family run business which is where you are the md and the and the md and the uh, chairman as family members and the rest of the board and the team or the chief op operating officer is a professional and then you have where the entire board is professional and the family is just the owners of the company they don't run the business so we are seeing uh, as the business becomes bigger and bigger we are seeing institutional types of businesses being created which are not influenced only by family members so examples are godrej murugappa vipro dabar and there is second type of business for which business is for the family and the family employment is critical okay so let me give this you have a expanded family yeah and you need to deploy someone there in a position because you need to give him uh, employment now in such cases what should happen is that the person appointed to a particular role should be worthy of that position okay and he should be better than appointing a professional so we are okay with a family run business which is very large but the family run business should have the uh, persons who are in charge of key portfolio should should be better than if they had appointed professionals so you need to judge a family member just like you would judge the leadership team however there is a small problem which these family run businesses are facing the ones which have not moved to the institutional business so what happens is over the last previous 10 to 15 just take the case of ambani again so he has gone into from from polyester they moved to tele uh, they moved to petrochemicals from petrochemicals they added refineries then they went to upstream then further on they got into telecom retail and so the organization is just been growing and growing and growing but what is happening is a second generation which is coming in is very young so they are inheriting huge empires with very little uh, experience and in such cases it is very important that there be a quasi kind of position where the where initially the the professional management comes into play <coughs> and then the family scion moves into take the take gradual responsibility at the board levels as he gains expertise and he starts proving his mettle you know so you have in the ambani family at very young ages his children being there in the business 
Now to evaluate all this thing and cut it down into a small manageable uh, portions, we need to consider the factors while evaluating family businesses. So as I mentioned to you, succession planning is very important. You know, businesses which have succession planning in place will do very well. Then induction of new blood in the business. It is very important to have young blood, new ideas, and all these for entering the business. So people who enter the business, they should have an appetite for entering into alliances, JVs, equity participation and participate in global opportunities. What happens is that when you enter a business, you have a mindset which is relegated only to that much. Right? Now, what is happening is as the world globalizes, business become the the uh, business uh, it becomes easy to bus do business abroad like today on this um, webinar we have people who are coming in from all over the world so we have some from singapore we have many from the cults okay so suddenly what happened is sitting in this uh, cocoon hole of uh, mumbai i am reaching out to all these audiences now it can only be possible if i have the appetite for entering into alliances jvs equity participant global opportunities are you getting my point? Then there is that thing which I called of hunger, you know, to create shareholder value, keenness to get listed. You know, someone will have a dream of being listed on the NASDAQ. So some, you may consider it greed, but you know, it's actually good because what you are doing is you're aspiring for growth. And this is where we are looking for companies and young blood who can bring in this to the table. Then there's a, also another extent to which professionals have been inducted into the leadership team. So recently I met up with a company called uh, uh, Kisan Moldings, which has been going through a very bad time. Okay. A few months back, the price was about 60. Today it is a little below 200 and hit 200 and come down. What happened? Very good company. Number one in, in the field of uh, uh, pipes. PVC pipes. Unfortunately, they got this strategy wrong. They had to recoup. They went into debt. They had a debt problem. They could not grow their business because they did not have working capital. And for the last four years, the company stagnated 400 crores turnover. Now what happens? Second generation comes in. So he's Howard bred, uh, studied in a foreign university, come into the business. He does all the right things. So what does he do? There are disputes in the family. So what he does is that first they give a, they'll dilute their holdings. Okay. They need capital. So they get a private equity on board. They dilute from 70% to 40%. And then what the MD does, who's the chief in the la in a large family, he buys out the stake of the other people, consolidates the holding. Otherwise what will happen tomorrow? Some guy goes and sells. There's a, a problem which is created. I'll give you an example of that a little later. Okay. He builds the business and then he appoints a professional leadership team. So what happens? A CFO comes in from one place. Uh, they're in the business of pipes. So they have a business of solvents, you know, of, uh, so see, uh, operate operations head is brought from a PD light group who understands the solvent business. So getting proper people in place, inducting proper team uh, doing the right things at the ownership level, consolidating ownership, diluting stake, bringing in capital, uh, doing a little bit of financial engineering where they manage to delay repayment of capital, slightly higher interest cost, but you know, they get liquidity and they start moving up. So a company which was doing 40 crores turnover suddenly is doing 55 crores turnover now in a span of three months. And is expected to do 70 crores turnover the next two years per month. So what happens? It is on a growth path from 440 crores to touch 750 crores to 850 and to do 1100. And then we do a re-rating of that company. So we say 1100 crore company like APL pipes is valued at 10,000 crores. There's another company which is valued at 5,000 crores. Should you not value this company two times its sales? And then you come with a number of which is 1100 crores, which is a realistic number and still it becomes a five, six bagger. And this is how uh, purely a promoter coming into the business 
the second line there is a rejuvenation at the promoter level uh, turns and helps to get the uh, business going around then another thing we need to understand is has the family owned business transitioned to a professionally run business where ceo md or chairman are not from the family take the case of the munjals in hero honda they have he's resigned he set up a family office and the entire operations are managed professionally take the case of hcl tech where the ceo is a professional so you know if the company had not transitioned then we need to see whether the family members in the leadership role are competent to take on the mantle that the stated position requires okay uh, i think we are doing good on time uh, 15 more minutes to go so you know most of what i had to say i have already said and uh, i have prepared a checklist for identifying uh the first dimension of the toolbox so this toolbox which i have prepared i will send to you as a google sheet which you can print out and keep or you can use it for ready reference and when you are analyzing the companies you can go through them right so uh i'm going to close this uh, webinar today the first session uh but before that let me tell you that uh, it was really nice uh delivering it to i really enjoyed there were teething problems but i think we will learn as we go along right okay so ashish is asking a question can you explain how bad management good business is a good idea so uh ashish what happens is that a rising tide lift all boats if you understand what i mean so what happens is that uh, the fortunes of the industry will change so let us take the example of the steel industry okay government comes into play and uh, puts anti dumping duty on chinese goods what happens everyone starts earning delta margins positive delta everyone does well so you will have a jspl which does well you have a tisco which does well and you have a sale which does well right now sale is actually abhorred by the street they don't like it their sell reports at 55 do their stock is 98 but what has happened the fortunes of the business industry have improved management is not of a high quality but the stock is doing well <coughs> now mind you this is not my interpretation of sale management i hold them in high regard but as per the street the business is not that the management is not that strong so another question which is coming is how many business groups are there in india if there are 5000 stocks there are 4000 business groups okay now i am still open to questions uh, we have uh, 11 minutes before we wind up please go ahead with whatever questions you have uh, i hope this uh, this uh, first dimension of tech uh, or the investment toolbox is absolutely clear to everyone i need to get a yes or a no from everybody so whoever is in a position where they have not understood a few things please be free to ask uh, i will get in touch with you uh, i will get it solved so umang is asking a couple of questions is that if the promoter is selling its stake in the company then what's its impact and if they pledge their holding then what is its impact correct so you know these are all double edged swords we have to understand that when a promoter gets his company listed he has to give stake so a stake sale will happen and is that a good thing or a bad thing not necessarily if he is coming in with very heavy valuations and leaving very little for the investor on the table then uh it's it's difficult you know i give you an example of dixon technologies which came out with an ipo 
great company but valuations were maxed out at the ipo pricing only and further on then the stock goes up now what you are buying may not be uh, i may be wrong in the short term but in the long term a company which earns 3% margin has the 25% uh, roe should not get more than 25 to 30 type of p multiple okay and this is where the entire stocks will correct so as i said like a tide lifts all boats uh warren buffett said you will come to know swimming naked when the tide recedes so when the bull market bull phase is off right what will happen is you will be left with stocks uh which will still be on anchor still be bobbing in the low tide but there will be some who will capsize and get stranded right that was number 1 second is uh, umang you asked a question if promoter if they pledge the holding then what is the impact so you need to see the pledge history pledging is a concern because and in and promoters to drive growth capital always pledge their shares it's a leveraging your pro, uh, uh, your holding is obviously there but if you have bad business fundamentals and uh, and you have the case of pledging then it is it's a warning sign am i clear on that srikanth i agree with you rather than dixon i would go with wheel and murli is asking uh, the changes of government can impact stock stocks how does one mitigate the risk here cause there would be there would be any time to respond post the election result so it's all about valuations uh, murli uh, one year prior to elections when the market is at such heavy valuations it makes sense to exit uh, psu stocks and park your money elsewhere so as they say uh, buy low sell high and when the time is so right why not exit so can uh, srikanth is asking can you let me know the impact of qip on stocks now everyone is going for qip so what is happening is when you're doing a qip you're getting in capital into the company right so if someone is investing money at 35 times multiple you know what you're getting a lot of uh, equity capital very cheap because a 10 rupees share if you're selling at and if the uh, stock is quoting at its eps is 10 you are selling at 350 then you are getting money at 35 p right so the guy who is doing the investment if he is coming at a valuation which is unjustified then he is digging his own grave from the company point of view it's extremely good stock tanking because the qip came in like dlf as uh, srikan mentioned uh, that's purely work of fate yeah. Uh, I'll give an example. When Sun Pharma was 1100 rupees, one private equity fund invested 10 billion into the stock, and after that the stock came to 440. So what happens is that you have to gauge these uh, irrational volumes of investments at peaks and bottoms. They are actually telltale signs of overvaluation and undervaluation, right? So if he bought uh, 11 billion worth of stock at 1100. somebody sold it to him right so we have to evaluate the guy putting in 1100 rupees when the stock is at 28 multiple and a guy putting in money into say let us say into jspl which is doing a qip at 270 how do they react so abhinav is asking in this slide you have shown JSW, which is taking, uh, what is your view as part general taking over going forward, and the company enters cement business through NCLT route. I think uh, cement is a very uh, related to steel business because the the steel uh, slag which comes out goes into making cement, right? So there is uh, that residue which is there, which otherwise giving value addition is there. and when you buy a stock through an nclt business obviously you are going to get it at a discount see for cement business you need 2 years to put up a cement plant capital needed is anywhere between 110 to 140 million dollars 
and if you are getting a steel company at say uh, a cement company if you are getting at say 70 dollar valuation or even buying at 110 a very good running plant like uh, like uh, like ultranet took from uh, jp associates i think it was a fantastic buy for js uh, for uh, for ultratech <clears throat> so if jsw goes in for that it will be wonderful because you are putting in less capital into the business you will get it at throwaway slide then uh, then i am coming to then there are some questions which i am finding a little difficult to understand is if i increase umang is asking sir how do you judge stake holding promoter holding huge or vice versa if i increasing the stake or vice versa di increasing the stake or vice versa see promoter stake promoter increasing the stake means obviously good for the company right if you want to buy a share and the promoter is also buying with you obviously promoter knows more than you know your case in example is that bought hg at 475 promoter also bought the share with other 475 then on the con call the promoter someone asked the promoter this question why are you buying your stock he said for the same reasons that you do and today the stock is a 10 bagger from that price another question from umang is utmost priority what investors should look well i have given you the uh, 12 dimensions of the investment toolbox and the first dimension is the one which you look at with utmost priorities now harsh is asking a question there are 6000 companies and you also say that out of them 4000 are business groups so where to start screening the company based on business groups or something else harsh i will this answer this question to you in the next dimension when we take it up this is a question which will be perfectly justified in the when we take up the second dimension okay any other questions class we are bang on time anybody else shavan how to incorporate quality criteria as well screening that we'll do it now when we do the cases case studies from tomorrow onwards we will do it sora we will definitely be sharing the slides so when i didn't get your question uh so nirupam is asking will we be taking up case studies for any one stock from the list we have prepared and send it today on group no we will not be doing that you will be doing that nirupam but i will assess your work and i will tell you when we will be doing that things uh shravan you are saying your question is from say from sources i quite didn't follow that shavan quality criteria yes only you can judge but when you do all the kind of work that i have told you to do it will be your quality it is your investment it is your multi bagger market will reward you in its own ways
So Abhinav is asking, is value creation a criteria when you look at a group as should we look? How many business have they listed and what time of the business cycle when we shortlist a group? So as I said, past performance and uh, success with other businesses definitely a criteria to uh, value a business because look at Mahindra's, they always enter a lot of businesses. So should we say my, uh, uh, Mahindra's are uh, selling themselves the thin? Not really because uh, they bring professional management into play. <coughs> they provide the growth capital and they stay away. You know, they let the professionals do their bit. So definitely if a group has created value, it has shown its hunger for market cap and those are the horses that you should be betting on. <clears throat> so between a Tisco and Ambani and a Vedanta, which are all three good business houses where you would put your money, I would go with Vedanta followed by uh, uh, the Birlas and then followed by Ambani. So Vedanta, because he has tremendous hunger, not that uh, uh, Mukesh does not have hunger, but I, but I don't believe he's a very transparent promoter. Uh, Birlas are good compounders of money. They really are very disciplined in uh, managing the cost of capital, running the businesses. They understand scale. So between the two Vedanta and Birla, uh, Vedanta is a growth stock and Birla is a steady compounder. So I deliberately I took example of three strong guys, you know, three winners and how I would rate them. Just see the way uh, Vedanta has created value for themselves and for shareholders. Phenomenal. Okay, friends, thank you so much. And now uh, I'm logging out and I will see you again on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. And I will send you your assignment sheets for Sunday, Monday and Tuesday on Monday and Tuesday. Just bear with me for this one week. The next week onward, we will stick to our routine. And uh, I will get a, a very interesting guy on chat in the evening tonight. So we'll have a, a WhatsApp party from eight to nine. Thank you. Bye-bye.